My name is Jill Gardosik, Internship Coordinator in the Career Services and Employer Relations Office at Framingham State University. And we are gathered here today, joined by Sierra Barrick from the Washington Center. And she's going to discuss the academic internship program that's available um, through this wonderful organization that partners with our school located down in Washington, DC. So feel free to take it away, Sierra. Great. Um, I am going to share my screen. Um, all right. Um, thanks everybody for being here today. Um, hopefully we'll get to um, answer all of your questions and um, you know address any concerns that you have. My name is Sierra. I've been working um, with Jill for a number of years, bringing Framingham students to the Washington Center. Um, you know, in DC, we've also, um, you know, been talking about some virtual options as well. Um, but, you know, we've been around for 45 years. We've brought over 60,000 students to Washington. We're the oldest organization of our kind in the country. Um, and so, you know, doing the Washington Center program is not simply just getting an internship to put on your resume. It's really a full program and a full experience. So um, as we sort of move through the presentation, if you have questions, um, feel free to drop them in the chat um, and we'll be able to address them at the end. Um, so first things first, um, I hope Jill, this is our slide for when we record the session, you'll have it as a recording, um, but then we'll do Q&A afterwards. And then, you know, again, please use the chat function um, to ask any questions. And then at the end, we can just talk casually among ourselves, but if there's something you wanna jot down um, and make sure you don't forget uh, that, that is definitely available to you. So um, I just want to talk about, you know, the, the elephant in the room. We're living through a global pandemic. These are unprecedented times. Um, and the Washington Center is really trying to adapt to, you know, meet you where you are. So currently we're offering a variety of different versions of the program that students can participate in. These options are really going to be determined by Framingham, whether or not you can participate in one or some of these options. Um, so Jill can definitely address that at the end here. But just so you know, we're running three versions of the program. We have a fully in-person program. So students are coming to DC, they're um, you know, living and working in the city. This is not an option that's available to everyone. It really depends on if you're the right fit for an internship that happens to have in-person component. So of the 200 students we have with us this semester, only about 20 of those students have in-person internships. Um, DC is slowly reopening, of course, as vaccination rollout um, you know, moves forward. So for those of you thinking about joining us in the fall, we'll be looking at a very different professional landscape, but definitely something to keep in mind. Most of our students are doing the hybrid or the mixed version of our program where they're living at home or sorry, they're living in DC, but their internship and their um, the additional parts of our program are all conducted virtually. This is a great opportunity to take advantage of everything that DC has to offer, walking the National Mall, enjoying the museums that are open, eating outside or enjoying some of the parks, um, but also being able to stay engaged in your internship as well. Finally, we are offering a fully remote version of the program. So your internship, um, the academic course that you're going to take with us, as well as the professional development programming, all of that can be conducted um, from the safety of your couch. So that is sort of the Washington Center's offerings at the moment. Again, Framingham will be able to decide. Framingham may say no students can go in person. All students must go in person. All students must do the hybrid version. Um, so we can definitely talk about the Framingham specific stuff um, as we move forward in the presentation. So I sort of touched on these three component parts um, not too long ago, but these are the sort of core tenets of what, what it is that the Washington Center does. We offer an internship. So this is a really big part of what it is that you're going to be doing at the Washington Center. Um, that's why you're probably here. Maybe some of you here have never had an internship before. Maybe some of you are thinking about internships for the first time. Um, I will say internships are an essential part of your college career. I did not have an internship as an undergraduate. It is a huge mistake that I made. Um, it definitely sets you back. Employers really are only looking for students who have had professional experience as undergraduates um, or some kind of experiential education. So if you don't, for whatever reason, move forward to the Washington Center, please keep in touch with Jill and think about getting internships um, locally or, or you know, somewhere in Massachusetts. Um, but really the internship is what, what you're here for. We do have these two other component parts that really complement that experience. There's the academic course. So you're gonna take an academic course with us. 
Um, and so I'll work my, I'll talk to you a little bit about what that entails, what courses are available to you there. And then finally, career prep or professional development um, is the third main component of this program. And so by putting all of these things together, you're really elevating your experience. It's not just you going out and getting an internship, um, you know, working for a semester, crossing off, you know, um, crossing your T's and dotting your I's and making sure that you've done the things you need to do. Um, this is really a program that you're investing in. So let's talk about the big thing, right? The internship. We are partnered with over 400 different organizations in and around DC, from big for-profit companies to little non-profit companies to um, think tanks, federal agencies. So it doesn't matter what it is that you're looking to do. We work with all majors, all minors. Um, so, you know, what we're going to do is work with you to find the, the fit that's right for you. At all of our internship sites, um, you'll be signing what we call an intern's bill of rights. So you and your supervisor are going to have an agreement about what kind of work you're going to be doing. Um, but you are absolutely not, you know, getting coffees, picking up laundry, shredding paper, making copies. Um, you might do a little of those things perhaps, but your work there is supposed to be a full-time professional internship. All of our sites know this. Um, you are going to appear, be a peer to your colleagues because we want you to leave with a full por you know, portfolio, a lot of work that you've done that you'll be able to show to other um, future employers. So let's talk about how we actually get you matched up with those internships because I think this is what sets the Washington Center apart from if you were to go out and look for an internship on your own. So we have what we call the internship matching process. Once you're accepted to the Washington Center, you are guaranteed an internship. So this is really important because if you were to go out and look for an internship on your own, which maybe some of you have, you'll know that you'll apply to a million places. You'll never hear back from anybody. If you do hear back from some of them, maybe they're not you know, very clear about what your duties and responsibilities are. Um, we take all that ambiguity off the table. So once you're accepted, you'll be assigned what we call a pre-arrival advisor. These people deal with everything pre-arrival before you start your time in DC or the start of your program virtually. They'll set up a, a Zoom meeting with you. Uh, this Zoom meeting has two main objectives. The first is to go over all your application materials and, and make sure that you are what we like to call DC ready, right? That this is the best version of yourself that you can put forward, that your resume is polished, that your statements look good, that they accurately reflect the kind of career experience you're looking to have. Um, and then the second part of this meeting is to really get to know you, to figure out what you're interested in, what you're passionate about, what drives you. Um, and from what we learn in that meeting, the pre-arrival advisors are going to work with our site coordinators and find internships that are the right fit for you based on what you've shared with us. Uh, they will then take all of your application materials and send them out to our relevant partners. Those partners will then review your application. And if they think you're the right candidate for the position that they have available, they'll set up an interview with you. So this is where you're beginning to work a little more independently. You'll be corresponding with these sites, setting up your own interviews. You do need to be in touch with us about where you're interviewing, how these interviews are going, uh, whether or not you're going to accept an offer. Um, but you know we're, we're there to support you throughout that process. We encourage you to take as many interviews as you're offered. Um, this is a great way for you to practice this essential professional development skill, right? Interviewing is something you're going to do throughout your entire life, your entire career. Um, so please take as many of those as, as you're offered. And then finally, you know, if the interviews go well, you may be made one offer, you may be made multiple offers. Uh, it's ultimately up to you to decide where it is that you'd like to intern. So if one appeals to you more than another, that choice is yours. You're more than welcome to consult with, you know, our team as well as with Jill and other members of your career services office to say, you know, I've got these options on the table. What do you think I should do? Um, but that choice is really up to you. Once you've agreed to an internship, once you've signed off and confirmed that that'll be your placement for the semester, you're pretty much good to go. There are a couple of other things that you'll need to do, including like filling out a community profile, getting your roommate set up, things like that. Um, but by and large, the, the internship matching process is the big thing you need to do before you arrive in DC. Again, if you have any questions about this, I'm happy to talk in more depth um, you know, during Q&A, uh, but let's move on to talk a little bit about the academic program. So one night of the week, you're going to take a course with us. Um, right now, all of these courses are being offered virtually. It's unclear how things will look for the fall, particularly because 
um, you know, the vaccine rollout is, we'll see how it goes. Um, but usually during a given semester, we offer roughly 20 different academic courses that you can choose from. All of these are taught by what we call industry professionals. So they all have PhDs, but they're people who are working in the field. They are experts at what they do. Some of them are senior intelligence officers, or they're working for different sectors of the government. Uh, maybe they're working for big NGOs. So these are people who have a, a you know, in-depth knowledge of the course material, perhaps course material you might be familiar with um, or get on Framingham's campus, but the perspective that they lend to that is different because it's sort of a DC insider's perspective. So these courses obviously don't cover every major. We don't have a Victorian English lit uh, you know, course or an ancient Greek statuary course, but what we do have is sort of, you know, hopefully courses that peak interests for all different kinds of people. Um, and Jill will work with you to see how these courses fit back into your transcript at Framingham. So uh, we can talk a little bit about credits in a bit. So that's the academic course. Again, if you have more questions about this, happy to address them during Q&A. Um, finally, I wanna talk about the career preparation part of this because I really think this is one um, part of our program that elevates the whole experience and really sets us apart from you going out and having this experience on your own. So um, the career prep is really broken down into these three, three sort of buckets, the professional development, the career exploration, and our networking events. To guide you through each of these parts, um, you'll have a career advisor assigned to you, um, you know, once you've joined the program. So this is a person who you can meet up with one on one, who is happy to talk to you about, you know, interviewing all the kinds of things that you might need, any kind of individual coaching that you might be looking for. They're happy to talk to you about law school, graduate school, um, all the kinds of exams that you might need to take that next step. Um, but this is your go-to person during, you know, what you should be thinking of as your professional semester. So the first category here is the professional development um, workshop. So these are all workshops. We offer roughly 40 different workshops that you can attend during the semester. You need to attend at least 10 of them. Um, and you can opt into whichever one seem most relevant to you. I will say that most of our students are opting into as many as they can make given their particular schedule. So even though you're only required to attend 10, students are trying to attend as many as possible. Um, but this is a great way for you to really curate your professional experience um, or your professional development. So perhaps you're a really strong interviewer and you don't necessarily need that workshop, but maybe you need to learn how to negotiate your salary or navigate your benefits or manage your manager. So these are all different, you know, tools and skills that you can learn at these workshops um, that really, you know, take what's going on at your internship and add clarity to that and, you know, really give you a different perspective on the work that you're doing, the professional relationships you're having. Um, so the workshops, again, there's tons of them that you can really choose from. The second part of this is career exploration. So sometimes we have sophomores join us or juniors join us who are unsure of what it is that they want to do in the world. Um, sometimes we have seniors who know exactly what it is that they want to do and the inverse. Sometimes we have first semester juniors who come who know exactly what it is that they want and second semester seniors who have no clue. And so through this career exploration um, portion of the career development, we're taking you to different organizations all across the city and trying to help you think critically um, through engaging with different kinds of organizations. You know, is what you think you want to do really what you want to do? Or because you've had this opportunity to talk to these professionals at this organization, maybe you're starting to think differently about your professional path. So um, we really want to give you access to different kinds of career paths and help you think through, you know, is this the right thing for me? Is this really what it is that I want to do? Finally, the big thing that the Washington Center does is our networking events. So if you were to join us in person, or at least before COVID, you know, during orientation, some of the first things we do, we take your headshots and we give you business cards because we really want to send you out into the world. We get your LinkedIn up and running. You know, you may have one now, but we really take it to the next level um, because what we want you to do in Washington is develop important networks and connections um, that'll help you take this experience and springboard it into a career. Networking networking in DC does not 
just mean that you're making connections in DC. DC is a global city. We have many examples of interns who networked their way through DC and ultimately ended up getting jobs in you know major other cities, Boston, New York, LA, London, Tokyo, just because of the kinds of people that they were engaging with um, in, in the city. So don't think I'm not, I don't want to network in DC because I don't ultimately want to be in DC. And maybe you do, maybe you do want to be in DC and we can have that conversation as well. Um, but networking is really a way to build a huge web of people that you can rely on for letters of recommendation, um, job opportunities, and, you know, really connecting you with folks who want to help you take your career somewhere. So that's the third component of the program, the career preparation. Um, I do want to just uh, offer here is sort of two images of what it might look like if you're going to do the program in DC or if you're going to do the program from home. So in some ways, um, you know, you get to enjoy DC, as I said, you can enjoy Rock Creek Park, you can do the socially distanced food trucks, you can stroll the National Mall. DC is great. It's an incredible place to live. Um, it's also kind of a college town. There are tons of young people there. I would never see people over the age of 45 on my bus commute to work. You know, it's a really, really young and vibrant city, great concerts, um, sporting events. So it's a really fun place to be. Of course, all of this now is sort of on pause, but maybe some of you in this room are freshmen thinking about two or three years down the line. Um, you should really think about what a great place DC is to be, you know, in a non-pandemic world. For those of you thinking about doing the program virtually, if this is available to you, um, you know, you may be juggling other responsibilities at home. You can keep keep a part-time job perhaps. Um, you may have family responsibilities looking after older relatives or, or pets and siblings. Um, so there are pros and cons to each option. Um, and we can sort of talk about what those things look like, um, but did wanna give you a, a taste of what your schedules might look like. In both cases, you have supervisors at your sites who are invested in your success, who care about you know, your development. Um, the big difference is just simply the sort of style lifestyle. I do want to talk just very briefly about TWC as a program, as opposed to, again, I've mentioned this a few times now, it's not like just going out and getting an internship. This is really an investment in your future. You're joining a community. Um, we have tons of supportive TWC staff. So it's not like study abroad where you're in a different time zone and you're not sure who your point of contact is. Um, you have somebody appointed to you every step of the way. So as soon as you start an application, my colleague Janika is gonna call you and she's gonna be your admissions counselor and she's gonna work with you through your application, help you write all your documents and you know perfect your resume. So that'll be your first point person. Then you'll have a pre-arrival advisor as I talked about for the internship matching portion. So again, not on your own through that matching process. And then finally, your career advisor, the person who's there to help you during your time at the program, um, really grow and blossom into the young professional that you want to be. We also, as I said, we've been doing this for 45 years. We have tons of dedicated mentors, advisors, professionals, um, people we know who want to help you. And that includes 60,000 alumni. So the people that we've already Got, have already gone through the program are constantly engaging with our student population, trying to help them get jobs, help them grow. Um, and also the peers that you're going to meet in your program are also going to be people you're going to network with. I mean, the people who are doing this program are all going to have incredible placements at the White House, at the U.S. Marshals, at these major um, nonprofits or NGOs or think tanks. Um, and so this is a great way for you to, you know, really connect with people and become part of this really impressive community. So I know, I think as of last year, we had six TWC alum working in Nancy Pelosi's office um, who you know had been there for quite some time and it helped a lot of different TWC members um, get houses in the, um, help them get jobs in the government. So, um, you know, if you have any questions about how this differs from just doing an internship, you know, or just getting an internship, I'm happy to answer those questions, but this is really an investment in a program. So this is where we get a little bit into the specifics and Jill at any point cut me off or, or chime in here. Um, credits awarded by Framingham. You're going to get four units, which I imagine is 12 credits. I guess there are three credit courses. Um, it's, um, I know we have a, that's typically how it works. We have a slightly different um, system at our university. It's one credit per course. So okay. four, you know, four <laughs> units is a full semester for our students. Yeah. Okay, great. So you're going to be getting a full semester worth of credits, which is essential. You're not going to fall behind if you do this program during the semester. You're still going to graduate on time. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about costs. So um, if you have a 3.0 GPA and you're a Massachusetts state resident, 
your tuition um, is waived on campus. You'll then be responsible for our program and housing fees, which you can see listed there. But if again, you have a 3.0 GPA and you're a Mass State resident, you're gonna get a $6,500 scholarship. Um, so that basically wipes out the housing cost. Um, if you receive any financial aid on campus, that can be applied to the program and there may be additional funding on campus. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jill maybe to just talk a little bit more about this, if you have anything to add. Um, so actually, believe it or not, my question um, to you was gonna be, do you know, does the 6,500, is that coming from the Office of State Financial Aid, OSFA, where the students would be applying for that funding? No, this is our typical $5,000 scholarship that we've arranged sort of independently. They don't need to do anything as long as they meet those two criteria. Requirements. Yeah, Excellent. so okay. it used to be the five grand and it's now been increased to 65. 500. Yeah. And that's gonna be in place for um, any of our students that are um, interested in the upcoming fall 2021 semester. Yes, ma'am. Great. Yeah. All right. Um, Jill, anything to add here on this slide before I move us along? Um, there's a one more um, item that I wanted to bring to students' attention. So in addition to the 6,500 coming from the state, potentially, um, there is a program, a funding program that I oversee for our campus known as the CHOICE program. And there's the potential you might be able to earn some additional um, grant, scholarship grant funding um, that would be able to, um, it would be dispersed to you so you could use it towards any outstanding program and housing costs that you have that aren't covered um, from the state funding that you see on the slide. So if folks are really interested in exploring this opportunity, I encourage you all to um, you know, have a set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me through Starfish so we can kind of explore your specific situation a little bit further and I can get into the details of what it takes to qualify for uh, that choice funding that I oversee. Great. Um, so just some deadlines in case, you know, you're thinking about fall, we're sort of down here now. Um, so we're looking at April 7th and May 5th. Uh, Jill, do you have an internal application deadline for these students? I do not. Uh, we go by your deadlines. Um, and I always encourage students um, that they really want to aim for that early deadline. Um, one of the things that that's going to help, at least um, from the Framingham State perspective, is this is when we could try to get you the most amount of scholarship funding available. Um, you know, it's kind of first come, first serve. So if you're able to uh, meet all the necessary um, components uh, of the of the application progress and we get application um, process and we have a chance to connect. Um, I always encourage students to um, make that early that early deadline. Great. Um, I also just wanted to include here for your reference if you're thinking about joining us this fall, these are the dates of the program. So you would be moving in on August 25th. The internship period is August 30th to December 2nd, and then checkout is December 4th. So, um, you know, it might not be date for date with Framingham semester, but we do try to get it as close as possible for you. Um, and you'll have a nice long winter break, it looks like. So, um, yeah, in terms of next steps, we're going to do a little q and I've left Jill's um, email address here in case you want to get in touch with her. Although, as she said, she prefers to use Starfish to schedule appointments. So um, if you don't know how to use that, throw a question in the chat. I'm sure you're familiar, but it's always news to me. So, um, OK, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and now, great, there's tons of time for us to, to chat. Um, again, you can leave your cameras off. That's fine, but if you want to chat, we can talk or you can use the chat. I'm, I'm happy to do either whatever works for, for y'all. And thank you again, Sarah, for, um, you know, coming to this info session today for our campus and going through all the different um, components of the program. Um, I'm curious, cause again, I haven't met all of you. Um, do we have anyone um, joining us today that is like a current junior or a current senior and they're thinking about this for the fall semester. I know Rachel, you and I, we've um, connected previously, but is anyone really targeting the fall semester? 
Um, I came as this program uh, right now as a senior, and that's sort of one of my big questions is currently right now, I'm going to be like graduating. So in a few months, so I'm just curious, you know, can I, or is it still, do I still have the opportunity to take this program? And if so, what would that involve since I'll be graduating? So Tyler, do I, if I understand you correctly, you're going to be graduating in May. Is that the target? Yes, I'll be graduating in May. So um, I, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with how uh, a graduates are treated. Um, I'm gonna toss it to you in a, in a moment, Sarah, but from a Framingham State perspective, um, a lot, while you may be able to participate in a different way through the Washington Center, um, a lot of the funding that I have available would dry up um, because once you go into alumni status, the funding that I have available is specifically for students to be able to complete this program while they're an undergraduate. Um, so you would wanna keep that, um, keep that in mind. Um, and you, um, right, you, in order to participate in this program, I know that um, you do have to be enrolled in a school, you have to be enrolled in courses. So you would, in essence, if there is a way for um, graduated um, uh, folks to participate, you would essentially be paying for like a whole additional semester of schooling. So I'm gonna let uh, Sierra talk to that a little bit. Yeah, um, and Jill, feel free to correct me, but here's, here's um, we have students in your position all the time who are, they hear about this program and they say, I wanna do this, but I'm, I'm graduating in May. And so there's a few different options that you can think about. So the first I would say is that Framingham only allows students to participate during the semester. So the spring or fall, um, but the Washington Center runs a summer program. Um, because you would be graduated, you could participate in that summer program. But as Jill said, you would not be eligible for any funding from either the state of Massachusetts or from her office. So you'd be paying our summer fees, the full summer fee. Um, it's slightly cheaper than the, the prices that I listed on the PowerPoint because it's a 10 week program as opposed to a 15 week program. Um, so if you've got like an extra 10 grand laying around and you wanna spend it on this program, that's something that you can do and students do it. As I've been saying, this is an investment in your future. Many of these internships turn into jobs directly, you know, from the time that you're with us. Um, so that's one way of thinking about this. I don't know if this option is available to you, but we do have students do this at other schools. So Jill, feel free to hop in here, but students delay graduation. So what they do is ultimately they enroll again for another semester in the fall. Um, and so this, they still get student status. Um, they are, you know, and essentially they would get all the benefits that, you know, they get the state money, they get Jill's money, um, they're enrolled as students. Um, and so my understanding would be if you're enrolled as a student, you are charged, you would normally be charged the four units, right? I guess that's full-time status. Um, you'd be charged the four, four units for tuition, but because you're doing the Washington Center, that cost gets waived and then you would just pay the same cost as all the students who do the program in the fall. Jill, I'm not really sure if that's possible, but it does happen elsewhere, so. Right, that would be something that you would wanna explore with your academic advisor. Cause again, you would wanna think about it um, in terms of your staying for an extra semester. You would just be in DC in this particular program. But in essence, instead of say a four year to a baccalaureate degree, now you're taking four and a half years to complete that baccalaureate degree. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, great question. What other questions can we answer for folks today? Anything in terms of, you know, you know, the application materials, um, you know, if folks are considering uh, maybe moving down to DC, I don't think, Sarah, I don't think you touched upon, you know, what the housing situation yeah. is like currently in COVID. I think that might be helpful. Yeah, so we own this beautiful apartment complex uh, right in downtown DC. It's about a 10 minute walk to the Capitol, seven minutes Union Station, two minutes to the Metro, tons of grocery stores and cool restaurants. Um, it's in the Noma district if you're interested in doing a little Googling, um, but it is, it's a really great place to, to live. 
Normally, the way that it works is that you'll live in an apartment. There are four of you in every apartment. Two of you share a bedroom. So it's two in a bedroom, two in a bedroom, and then sort of an open. There's a living room and a kitchen. It's completely fully furnished, TV, washer dryer in unit, forks, knives, plates, pots, pans. You don't need to bring any of that stuff, just your bedding and then anything you need for your room. Given COVID, um, the way that we've sort of adapted this is that you're no longer sharing a bedroom. So there are two of you in each unit, um, which is great because now you're getting a single for the price of what we normally charged for a double. Um, and we also have other, you know, protocols, which I'm sure you might be experiencing if you're living on your own campus, um, you know, no outside guests, uh, you know, must wear a mask when not in your room, all the sort of COVID protocols that I'm sure you're all familiar with. If you have specific questions about COVID protocols, I'm happy to answer them, um, but don't don't want to get in the weeds too much. But yeah, the housing is great. And so it's, it's six floors of apartments. And then the ground floor of that building has nine classrooms, an enormous auditorium, a beautiful gym, a computer lab. Um, so everything you need is really in-house. So if for whatever reason in the fall, we're not teaching virtual classes, but we're in actual class, all of those things are taught in the building. Um, or if you're thinking about the spring or fall 22, um, again, the entire program is really housed in what we call the RAF, the residential and academic facility. Excellent, thank you. Um, and I just wanna um, share something with the group at large because I've been trying to answer some questions that have been coming to me in the chat. Um, traditionally, how this works at Framingham State University is for the semester which you want to participate in this experience, you're going to be using four free electives to do so, right? So we are a small liberal arts college. We use a general education model. So when you're talking with your academic advisor, depending on what your major is, you have specific major requirements you need to complete um, to earn your degree. Then you have your general, your general education requirements, your gen eds to complete. And then you have a certain amount of free electives that are available to you. Whether or not this particular experience can be used to maybe partially fulfill some of your major requirements, that's where we have to get your academic advisor involved and they need to be a part of this conversation. Only the faculty on our campus can determine um, how and when this program might be right for you in terms of course sequencing, in terms of when might be the best time um, throughout your academic career to participate in something like this. Um, so this is why you know further conversation <laughs> is needed uh, depending on each individual's uh, student situation, but kind of keep that in mind, especially if, you know, you're um, in your first year, your sophomore year, or even if you're in junior year and you're thinking potentially about next spring, spring of 22, um, or thereafter, you would want to be um, setting aside and not using up those free electives in order to be able to easily participate in this program. Any other questions for us? I think, I know we've talked about housing, we've talked about um, the evening classes, we've talked about, um, you know, credits and things like that. Does anyone have, um, you know, questions about applying and getting ready to apply and what the next steps would be for the upcoming fall 2021 semester? I'm happy to talk just briefly about um, the uh, application process, which I think is relevant to those of you thinking about the fall, you know, applications you're due in April. I did just in the chat um, leave two links. The first um, will pull up a page where if you fill out your information, you'll join our mailing list. Um, this is good, useful, you know, emails. I mean, you can always unsubscribe, but what it does is it puts you in touch with other students. You can read student stories, send you important reminders about dates and deadlines. Um, the other person I wanted to introduce you to is Janika. She, you know, couldn't be here today. She's running another session, but um, that is her email address. If you're interested in any a program at any time this semester, next semester, you know, well into the future, um, just drop her an email. She's she'll she'll zoom with you or she'll text with you, um, whatever you want to do. But she's a really great resource for you moving forward. 
In terms of the application, it is a very simple application to put together. Um, I would still say that you need to work hard and put your best foot forward, but it is something that you can do over a week, weekend, you know. Um, so, you know, don't worry if you need, um, we're happy to help you put this thing together, but uh, it's a fairly simple thing to do. So there are five main component parts to the application. You need a one page resume. Um, when I say one page, we mean one page. You don't put a picture of yourself on it. You know, I'm sure Jill can give you all the tips and tricks. No sort of funny arrangement, just black text, Times New Roman, whatever. Um, and we, we have samples on our website that you can look at, but you've got a great career services office that's there to help you. Um, so a one page resume, that's like an essential part. You need a transcript. Um, we're currently accepting unofficial transcripts, but normally we accept um, only official transcripts. So if you're having any trouble getting an official one, just let us know and we'll take an unofficial one. You need one letter of recommendation, uh, hopefully from an academic faculty. Um, but if you have an employer who you think might write well for you or something like that, um, we're happy to consider that. Then there are two brief writing portions. Um, and I mean very brief. So the first is 100 words, which is roughly three sentences. This is the statement of professional interest. What we want out of this statement is, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a statement of what you're interested in doing professionally. So, you know, what you're studying, what your, your professional career goals are, what areas you might be thinking about interning in. Um, and so it's just a brief statement. Again, we can help you craft these. There are samples on our website, um, but make sure you have people look over them, friends, family. Um, Janika is happy to do that with you. That's a big part of her job. The final part of this application is what we call an issues essay. This is a 500 word essay. So it's about a page and a half double spaced. We ask that you pick a topic related to your field of interest. Um, so whatever it is that you're passionate about and just write about it for 500 words. Um, you don't need a works cited page, although it's always good to, you know, uh, take on different perspectives and look at other sources, um, but it's not necessarily an academic piece of writing. It is being used as a writing sample. So we wanna make sure that, you know, you can go out and write a professional email or whatever, um, but largely it also helps us narrow down your internship options. So if in this particular issues essay, you take a political stance, it'll be useful for us to say, okay, the student probably doesn't wanna be aligned with these kinds of think tanks or whatever. So um, it really has two purposes, again, as a writing sample and as limiting your, your internship options. Um, but that's it, really. There's those sort of five documents. That's all you need to put together. The letters of recommendation and transcript can take a while to get, so we would encourage you to, you know, hop on it and ask for those things um, in advance, especially during the spring. Professors are very busy um, wrapping up semesters and things like that. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely ask for those letters uh, in advance. But if you have any questions, you can reach out to Jill, myself, um, or Janika to, to talk more about the actual application. Any other questions? All right, I'm also gonna drop my email address in the chat just in case you want it. Um, Again, Janika is happy to reach out to you and talk with you, but if you have specific questions based on this presentation, um, you know, I'd, I'd be, you know, delighted to speak with you. So, great. Excellent. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Sarah, for partnering with us and for providing all of this great information. And again, sharing your contact details and Janika's contact details with the students. Um, and for all of our students, again, um, if you want to um, have a conversation with me about your specific scenario, your major, you know, thoughts, um, regarding whether or not this is this might be the right fit for you, um, or again, you're you know just excited after hearing all of this today, and you want to get started on that application process, and you want to know who you need to start speaking with on our campus to make sure all the right pieces and all of the uh, boxes get checked off, you know, so you can be able to attend. Um, I'm more than happy to speak with students. Again, you're just going to log into your Starfish account and you can make um, an individual career counseling appointment with me um, to indicate that you wanna talk about specifically about the Washington Center. And I'm more than happy to get you started on that pathway. I've assisted students every semester 
for a number of years now. We always have a few students go every semester of every year to the Washington Center. And we have we hear a lot of great feedback. It's life changing. Um, they wish they had, you know, they could do it for a year or they could do it for two, two years. Um, you know, folks really, really feel like they've gotten a lot out of it. They stay in touch with folks that they've uh, met through the program. Um, so we can't say enough about how uh, meaningful these internships are and how wonderful the overall um, you know, program is. So you know, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, but that is it for us for today. I appreciate you all attending. Um, and again, feel free to email Sierra, email um, Janika, or set up an appointment with me, and then we can help um, you know, help you on your path to be able to participate either this fall or figure out how to get it into your future plans. But that's it. I'm going to sign off and I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to pause and stop our recording here. And I hope all of you have a safe and healthy rest of your week and rest of the semester. And thanks again for attending this info session that was jointly presented by the Washington Center and the Career Services and Employer Relations Office. Thanks everyone, bye-bye.